if you're a child of the 90s and you grew up in Canada watching much music, like myself, our next guest needs no introduction, but you might know him as a VJ, you'll know him as an editor, you'll know him behind the scenes on TV, but you'll now know him as an author with his first book, A Happy Has Been, a long title here, Bill, Exciting Times and Lessons Learned by One of Canada's Foremost Entertainment Journalist, and I'm talking to Bill Willich. Bill, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Ryan. Uh, yeah, that is a long title, isn't it? You forgot to read the foreword as well. There's a little backstage pass thing featuring the foreword by oh. Tragically Hips. Yeah, it's a, it's a long title. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of the longest titles I'm sure they have at the Kitchener-Waterloo Library. But the title itself, uh, I'm reading the first chapter there, you talk about the term has been. Why the title, A Happy Has Been? It's gotten a lot of attention, the title. Uh, I'm okay with it. I know it's self-deprecating. That's fine. Um, it, it, uh, an ex-coworker referred to me that way, and it hurt at the time, but then I had to think about it and realize, you know what, in some cases it's true. Uh, if you watched much music or much more music in the 90s or 2000s, and you hear the name Bill Walichka, you might think, oh, what has that guy been up to? Where is he? Is he dead? <laughs> uh, he hasn't done much lately, has he? Uh, no, I, I work in a smaller market. I've never left television. I've never left media. Um, it's what I do. And despite cuts all over Canada with print, with TV, with radio, I'm still here. So, uh, yeah, the, the title sort of addresses that. Uh, it addresses the fact that, you know, there are people that have followed my career, which blows my mind from day one. And so uh, it, it encompasses all that. And it gets a lot of attention, the title. I love it. <laughs> you know, you seem very passionate about, oh, I got to host, but I also got to control the narrative a bit and do the producing. Um, was one part more important to you than the other? Or was it kind of like I get to be part of the whole package? Yeah, I, I consider it. Um, I consider all the projects, you know, only complete if I'm involved every step of the way, because that's what I do. I started off editing and producing, and then I sort of fell into the on-air stuff. And I realized one day, I don't think there's a TV station in the world that would have a record company or the station fly that person to Switzerland, interview Shania Twain, take those tapes, come back, screen the tapes, um, paper edit and produce an hour special and oversee the post-production and hand the tape to the master control <laughs> and label it. Um, I consider it, uh, I, I've always considered it all the important things to what I do. And I love the editing. I love the behind the scenes stuff. And I still do. I love editing. And I, I think I talk about this in the book. It, it appeals to my mild case of OCD where things have to fit and things have to flow and, you know, you can't have this without this, so I'll move that there and I'll bring this up here and I'll put this over here, cover this with that because they're talking about that. Uh, it's a giant, beautiful puzzle each time. Uh, going from one medium to the other, what was it, uh, was it, did it feel uh, like a little intimidating going from like video and, and, and videography and, and radio into actually writing? Um, no, there's a certain amount of writing that I've always done. Um, I was a columnist for the Whig Standard, the Kingston Whig Standard, when I moved to Kingston. I did that for like four or five months, or four or five years, rather. I thought it'd be a couple of months, and it lasted a long time. And I used a lot of those columns as well as jumping off points for chapters in the book. And, uh, and I, you know, even when you write an hour special for television, if you need voiceovers, you know, you're writing voiceovers, so you're writing for television. Um, so yeah, that I, I love writing as well, but to, act, to actually publish a book, it was totally new to me and the process is involved and dealing with an editor and dealing with the publisher. And, you know, luckily the editor came back with not a whole lot of suggested changes, um, just tightening things up here and there. But for the most part, uh, it was a fun process and, you know, I'll never know the beauty of giving birth. I imagine it's quite painful, but I imagine it's beautiful that you created something and I can look at the book that way. Uh, one thing you brought up in the book is uh, looking back at, look at, you mentioned Bruce Springsteen's glory days and um, 
there's a joke from The Office where uh, Ed Helms talks about, you know, you know, there's so many songs about the, the good old days. It's, I wish there was a song to remind you that you're living in the good old days. Uh, do you ever look back at that time? It was, it was for, for me, it was special. You know, I know watching it, it was just like, wow. Like looking back at this, like you guys did so much creative stuff and you documented so much important, um, you know, like the 90s. It's so crazy that the night one, the, the 90s were 30 years ago, but like that the 90s had so much great music and culture and you guys played a huge part of that. Did you know you were doing something special or were you just having fun and being creative? No, of course not. Um, it's true, though. You never know why you're going through it that, you know, those days would be considered the good old days, magical, um, contributing to Canadian pop culture. You have no idea. You're just interviewing rock stars for a living and traveling around the world and meeting people. Um, it's not until years later where you where you have to where you you need 10, 20 years away from something to really mm -hmm. regard it in a special way and hold it in high regard um and i think that's what this much music documentary did last year i was on the this book and the tour were coming out around the same time this much music doc due to legalities the the actual much music documentary uh was supposed to be shown on crave and i think it got pulled they're dealing with record company rights and things like that and it's all lawyer stuff mm -hmm. but the book was happening around the same time as the documentary was coming out and I was doing interviews for both and did some of the much music touring um the screenings across Canada and there'd be a Q&A after and I uh, there was a very popular opinion amongst people that attended the doc screenings and for the Q&As that this will be a time and place that will never be replicated ever again sadly and I met a lot of parents whose Kids are now of the age of where they're getting into music and watching videos and specials on YouTube. And they tried to explain to their kids, no, if we wanted music or if we wanted to see an interview, there was this TV channel that we would go home and watch and watch music videos. And there's like a whole generation out there that doesn't understand that. <laughs> and so you, you talk about the 90s. Yeah, man, when you look at the Billboard Top 200 charts in the 90s, like country was on the top, hip hop rock dance music um you know alternative there was just so much going on musically and it was all doing well and much music showcased it all in a way that i think separated us from mtv in that there was a drive for relevance where we could contextualize what was going on in terms of culture and discuss lgbtq issues discuss literacy discuss uh race relations um and so it wasn't just entertainment and escapism we framed it in a way that it mattered and i don't think we see that a whole lot today with entertainment so there's a lot to be proud of for the 90s and the part of the 2000s i think with what much music did and um to be a part of it how humbling and beautiful is that where i'm on the receiving end of people wanting to know about that and talking about it and uh, it's very nostalgic and i don't like to like i said spend too much time in the past but when someone wants to bring it up those years i'm i have all the time in the world all right that's it's a really honor to a uh, big honor for me to talk to you i've been a big fan for all of my life and uh I, i'm really enjoying the book a happy has been exciting times and lessons learned by one of canada's foremost entertainment journalists by bill walichka and he'll be in the grand river kw area coming up on april 16th check him out at coles in stratford uh the indigo at conestoga mall in waterloo and the indigo in cambridge all on april 16th of the, later this month and bill thank you so much for taking the time it's been my pleasure Thank you, Ryan. I do appreciate the interest. And yeah, I'm looking forward to anyone that wants to come by and say hi and ask questions. And uh, for more information on the book, uh, billwalichka.ca. And uh, we'll see you down the road. Thank you so much, Ryan. I appreciate it.